The newest compound when it comes down to lifespan and longevity is being heavily investigated. And the cool thing is, is that this is something that is inexpensive and that we've known exists for a while and that anyone can get their hands on. So the research is getting very comprehensive. This new study was published in the journal Science. It looked at mice. It looked at worms, it looked at yeast, it looked at humans, it looked at monkeys, it looked at in vitro and in vivo. So we're gonna get into all of that because it looked at everything that we really know of when it comes down to aging, lifespan, all of this. So we'll break it all down. But I also wanna talk about some other studies that give us a breakdown. The supplement that I'm talking about is taurine. Now before you click off the video because you know what the answer is, we're gonna talk about dosing, we're gonna talk about timing and application because it's all gonna be weaved in with what we unfold with all of this research. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, after today's video, if you are trying to change your lifestyle or make any change to your diet, one of the most important things you can focus on is your gut. So that is a 25% off discount link for Seed. That is a daily symbiotic. So they're a big sponsor on this channel. If you wanna say thank you to this channel, the best way you can do that is supporting our sponsors that allow us to do what we do. So this is a capsule inside of a capsule technology with a prebiotic and a probiotic. So when you take it, you get the potential like proper colonization, the proper staging of the prebiotics and then the probiotics going where they're potentially supposed to go. So anyway, that link saves you 25% off your entire order with them. So make sure you check them out if you're looking for a good probiotic. And again, it's literally the only probiotic I recommend, literally the only one, because most of them out there are a couple of strains and are a complete nonsense. So that link is down below underneath this video. Taurine is what is called semi-essential. This is unique, okay? Semi-essential means that it only becomes important during times of stress and illness and just when we're exhausted when we need it. That doesn't mean that it's not important otherwise. It's involved in a lot of different things, but it's extra important under stress. Now, as we age, what do you think happens? We are exposed to more stress because our bodies are more fragile and there's just more stress. Now, taurine, you can get through supplement form. You can get through meat, dairy, and seafood. Hard part is the more you cook it, the more it breaks down. So we actually become a lot more deficient. And one of the things that this study that we're gonna talk about looked at is how much we lose in the way of taurine as we age. And it's pretty earth shattering how much we lose. It's ridiculous actually. Now let's talk first about a study published in Molecular Medicine Reports that looked at taurine as an anti-inflammatory but also as a, uh, an antioxidant. This is fascinating. Just to give you broad context before we get into this brand new study. This study found that taurine decreased oxidative stress by 66%. And it increased glutathione, it increased superoxide dismutase, and it increased catalase by 63%, 55%, and 59% respectively. Now additionally, also decreased inflammatory markers by 73% huge. Then there was a study published in Therapeutic Advances in Cardiovascular Disease that found that 500 milligrams of taurine taken three times daily decreased C-reactive protein, cardiac CRP, before and after exercise. Very important for people that are dealing with cardiovascular disease because they don't want that cardiac CRP to go up from exercise as a stress marker. So it had a huge sort of protective effect there in compromised individuals. And lastly, there was a study published in amino acids that found that 3,000 milligrams of taurine per day, which sounds like a ton, but it's not, ended up decreasing glucose levels, improving HOMA IR, improving insulin levels in type two diabetics. So there's metabolic effects too. Not to mention if you're prone to cramping like I am, taurine is going to help with electrolyte balance. You can take all the electrolytes in the world, but if you don't have a master regulator helping that, it could be problematic. You've been patient enough. Let's talk about this study published in Science directly looking at the aging piece. So this study looked at five things. One, does taurine decline as we age? Two, does taurine increase lifespan? Number three, does taurine increase health span? Number four, how does it work mechanistically? And five, does it help us with age-related like illness and decline? The results were fascinating. Number one, does taurine actually reduce as we age? Well, they looked at mice, they looked at humans, and they looked at monkeys. In mice, it declined by about 70% with age. In monkeys, it declined by about 85%. In humans, it declined by 80%, but they found the older humans got, it declined even more. This was only on the spectrum that they looked at. Now, why does it decline? 
probably because there's more demand for taurine as an antioxidant, as an anti-inflammatory, as we age, right? But additionally, taurine is found in meat. A lot of us reduce our meat intake because we're told to reduce protein as we get older. And people just don't eat as much as they get older. So our intake of taurine probably goes down. Number two though, does taurine increase lifespan? And in this, they measured it in mice, they measured it in worms and yeast. Why didn't they measure it in humans? Well, probably because we didn't have 100 years in time to do this. But what was interesting is it increased life expectancy in mice by 10 to 12% and about the same in worms, but it didn't do anything to yeast. Yep, the yeast did not budge. But when you look at this data, you understand why. Yeast have a completely different cellular metabolism, and that's why we do this, why research looks at different organisms, because then they can kind of identify, ah, maybe the potential mechanisms here are related to the mitochondria that are very similar in worms and rodents, but very different when it comes down to yeast. So we know that. But now let's talk about health span. Did it actually improve an organism's life? Like, did it improve? Health span is, how much vitality do you have as you get older? That's probably more important than your actual lifespan. Well, let's just put it this way. Taurine supplementation improved all parameters of health span that were tested, every single one. Now with mice, they noticed that it improved strength. So when they were doing their little mice bench pressing, they were killing it. Okay, it improved their grip strength. They also saw that it reduced age-related weight gain by 10%. Hmm because it's usually mitochondrial dysfunction. And then to top it all off, they had improvements in glucose, they had improvements in fatty acid oxidation, they had improvements in insulin sensitivity, and they had improvements in anxiety and depression, just to name a few things. So they were living longer, 10 to 12% longer, and they were feeling dang good benching 315 with mouse plates. Now we get into the mechanisms. Now, fair warning, this can get dense, but I'm gonna make it high level and make it simple. So you're gonna wanna stick with it because I do bring it full circle. And if this is a little over the top for you, just stick with it. You might learn something that you didn't know before. So they looked at the different mechanisms here to understand like why taurine was doing this. And one of the things they looked at were senescent cells. As we get older, senescent cells are what trigger, or, or they're sort of these carbon copies that are created, these clones of cells. And as we get older, these clones are dysfunctional and they cause problems, okay? So we don't want a lot of senescent cells as we get older. Now, beta-galactosidase is something that is kind of a marker for oxidative stress and senescent cells. Essentially, they took mice and they exposed them to toxic radiation. When they gave them taurine, it actually lowered their sort of stress response enzymatically. So beta-galactosidase reduced by 75%, showing that basically they were more resilient to a heavy stressor that would normally cause a lot of oxidative stress. The second thing they looked at was telomeres. Telomeres are associated with lifespan. As they get shorter, we tend to kind of associate that with life. They noticed that taurine did not change the length of telomeres. But what it did do is telomeres that were shorter, it decreased the amount of side effects of short telomeres. In this case, less senescent cells. So less sort of rogue clone cells, mutant cells, were created as a result of shorter telomeres. So it didn't directly increase them, but it protected from the effects of shorter telomeres. There were mild epigenetic changes, but not enough to really get excited about, so I don't wanna spend time there. Taurine increased nutrient sensing. This means, when you consume food and your body can recognize glucose, fats, proteins, and it can trigger the proper cascade of things that should happen, that is nutrient sensing. Proper AMPK phosphorylation, meaning proper fuel utilization. As we get older, improper nutrient sensing can be the difference between a healthy metabolism and an unhealthy metabolism. It's a huge, important thing. Additionally, in this same vein, they found that it increased autophagy. Now autophagy, you've probably heard me talk about or other people, autophagy is sort of cellular recycling that's very important, especially as we age. But in this case, it was key for protein turnover, for what's called proteostasis. So autophagy basically allows for the proper protein turnover to occur so things can rebuild and remodel the way they're supposed to, not in like a decrepit mutant way. There was a reduction across the board in inflammatory markers, but we've seen that with other literature. But then when we get down to the mitochondrial health side, this is where things were super cool. Supplementing with taurine reduced mitochondrial damage. The mitochondria is our energy powerhouse. And as we get older, 
all roads come back to mitochondria for healthy aging. And there was a 22% reduction in protein carbonylation, which is essentially protein improper kind of breakdown. And there was an 11% reduction in lipid peroxidation, which is fats that oxidize that can damage our mitochondria. So huge mitochondrial protectant, which I cannot overemphasize how important that is as we get older. Now, you've heard of stem cells before though. Stem cells are something that are you know, pro-growth and they help us repair. Well, there is a really cool response with taurine and stem cells. Because of what is called the LGR5 gene and kind of the influence that taurine had on that gene, there was more stem cell renewal. So this could have been playing a role in like the strength and repair and recovery aspects that we saw in the rodents. Again, a lot of data needs to be done in humans, but this is very fascinating. Now, how does all this correlate with age-related disease? Most of the time, age-related disease comes back to the mitochondria again. It comes back to different issues, NAD, different levels of energy that are ultimately depleted and unable to protect the mitochondria. Mitochondria becomes damaged and then we're metabolically unhealthy. It's a whole cascade that happens after that. We get frail, we get weaker, we can't you know, do our normal daily functions. Same thing happens in our brain. So with this, it was easy for researchers to connect the dots and say, yeah, there is going to be an impact here. And it's very powerful. Now, how much should you take? Taurine is one of those things that if you were to consume relatively rare meat, which I don't want to necessarily suggest that you do on the internet, um, you would be getting adequate amounts of taurine. When we cook taurine, we cook meat, taurine levels decrease, but you're still getting it from meat and seafood. One of the best things that you can get taurine from is actually dairy because you're not heating it. Now, if you have access to dairy that's not super high heat pasteurized, you might have even more taurine that is retained. Now, taurine as a supplement is dirt cheap. Now, what I would recommend when you look at it from a performance side, one to six grams seems to have about the same effect on performance, whether it's some cramping and overall just like oxidative uh, protection. Now, I've taken upwards of six, 7,000 milligrams, six, seven grams, and I don't see any benefit with exercise above what I see with like two or three grams. But when you look at like the cardiovascular research, what might be a good idea is a dosing strategy of one to 2,000 milligrams, one to two grams, three times per day. So spread out evenly throughout the day. And times of stress, when you're exercising more or when you're ultra stressed out, increase it. It's the one thing that doesn't build up in your system because you need to consistently get it, but it's still semi-essential. So you wanna be taking it whenever you're stressed out and whenever you're taxed and increase your dosage because you will definitely oxidize it and utilize it. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.